Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Anup Kumar Kapoor from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module Body Fluids in Person at Education Part 2 from the paper Forensic Anthropology. The objectives are, in this module we shall be focusing on the importance of most of the body fluids such as semen, saliva, urine, feces, vomit, etc. and their occurrence at the scene of crime. We shall further learn to forensically examine them through different techniques. Students have already learned about blood in last module, therefore it shall not be discussed here again. In this module, body fluids in personal identification Part 2, students will learn how to test the presence of semen on a stained cloth or saliva from cigarette butt and like and to extract DNA thereof. Now, first take forensic serology is not to be confused with conventional serology which deals solely with serum and its properties. Instead, forensic serology involves the identification of different types of body fluids. The identification of biological fluids during serological analysis is accomplished through presumptive and confirmatory testing. Presumptive testing refers to testing that is sensitive, fairly specific to the body fluids in question and can be performed quickly. Confirmatory testing is specific to the body fluid in question and sometimes also to a particular species. Confirmatory testing is still sensitive, but the time required for the testing can be much longer than that required for presumptive testing. A large majority of DNA or serology cases involve sexual assaults. Evidence from these types of cases commonly includes sexual assault, kids, complainant clothing, bedding, sometimes suspect clothing. Items commonly submitted for testing includes swabbing from crime scenes, clothing, weapons, or any number of other items that may possess bodily fluid. If an item is small, it can be submitted to the laboratory in its entirety. For larger items, stains can either be collected on a style cotton swab or a cutting from the item may be taken for submission at the lab. It is also possible to collect items that have been in contact with an individual's mouth such as cigarette, butts, dinky cans, cups, bottles, gums, candies, toothbrushes or skin masks. These items usually provide enough DNA for a profile to be established. Objects that have been touched all handles such as steering wheel, gun, phone or even a fingerprint may also contain biological evidence which can be collected for analysis but may not always produce a DNA profile. Generally, these pieces of evidence do not contain a substantial amount of biological material and are processed for DNA without going through any type of serological screening to maximize the amount of sample available for DNA testing. Biological evidence is often left at burglary and theft scenes by the perpetrators. Types of body fluids and their forensic examinations. The forensic significance of any body fluid lies in the fact that it may be eventually used to isolate blood group or DNA for person identification or to narrow down the search for accused. But the real challenge is to screen the belongings and evidences 
to find one possessing body fluid so that it may be sent to laboratory for testing. Generally, a suspect's body fluid on a complainant's body or clothing or a complainant's body fluid present on clothing or items belonging to a suspect are the objects that hold the most evidentiary or probative value for some cases. The most logical course of evidence examination is rather obvious. For example, in most cases of sexual hazard, the identification of semen is central to supporting a claim of sexual hazard. Furthermore, semen found on swabs in a sexual assault kit may have been more probability value than semen found on clothing or bedding because along with the demonstrating the presence of semen on the complainant, semen can only survive inside a victim for a finite amount of time, whereas semen stains on clothing or bedding can have a much longer duration depending on whether the evidence is vast. For these cases, a determination can be readily made for the type of testing to perform and most efficient order in which to process the items. Other cases are less obvious. If a sexual assault is oral, digital or utilizing a foreign object, then it is useful to determine the details associated with the alleged assault to process the evidence most effectively. In these sexual assault cases, examining an item for the presence of semen may have no evidentiary value. All cases may be affected by any post-assault activity by the victim such as washing, wiping, eating, drinking, etc. The time between the assault and the examination can be a critical factor in the successful identification of body fluids because the longer the time span, the more evidence that may be lost. In any forensic case, the order of analysis for each test should be planned in advance to lessen the chance of losing evidence for the next test. Homicide cases are more time-consuming to process than other types of cases where the victim cannot verbally relate any details of the assault. Homicides generally involve many items of evidence that must be analyzed because a determination cannot always be made regarding which evidence has the most value. Thorough crime scene investigation is essential to ensure that the probability of items in a case are collected and submitted to the laboratory. In cases such as these, communication with law enforcement is necessary to convey important cases details to ensure that evidentiary items are processed in the most logical manner. When evidence is submitted, a determination must be made as to whether that evidence must go through serology screening or whether the evidence can be sent directly for DNA analysis. Generally, all evidence goes through serology screening test. However, cases involving samples with trace amounts of DNA may not benefit from serology screening. Paternity and remains identification cases also do not require any type of serology screening because only reference samples are processed. Criminal, pat continues. Criminal paternity cases involves a sexual assault in which conception occurs. For these sexual assault cases, serology analysis is rarely performed. Instead, DNA analysis can be performed on the conceptuous that is living or aborted and the alleged father to establish or disprove parentage that is paternity testing. The different types of body fluids that we shall discuss in this module are as follows. First, semen, saliva, urine, feces, vomit, milk or tears and their forensic examinations and DNA isolation. It is important to note that most of the evidence processing and note-taking occurs 
during serology analysis because this is usually the first time evidence is opened in the laboratory. Serologists are responsible for documenting the type, quantity, and packaging of evidence received. In addition, a description of the evidence with notes and diagrams or pictures regarding the types of stains present and their location on each atom is placed into the case file. Serologists also take detailed notes of their testing and outcomes and this documentation is referenced during an analyst testimony during criminal proceedings. Through and precise note taking is essential because there may be a substantial amount of time between the completion of case analysis and an analyst testimony in court. It is also important in circumstances in which different analysts must interpret the case notes. Semen. The identification of semen is important in many cases of a less sexual assault. Semen is a body fluid produced by male individuals for sterilization. For forensic purposes, the composition of serum can be simplified into two components, seminal fluid and spermatozoa. Seminal fluid is a protein-rich body fluid originating primarily from the prostate and seminal vesicles. Spermatozoa, commonly referred to as a sperm, are the male gametes or sex cells produced in the testes. Not all men produce spermatozoa. In men who have had a vasculami, certain birth defects, or as a result of some diseases, seminal fluid will either not contain spermatozoa or contain very few. These are called oligospermines with low sperm count and azospermine that is no sperm. Therefore, it is useful to be able to forensically test for the presence of both seminal fluid and spermatozoa. A healthy male usually ejaculates about 2 to 6 microliter semen which has about 100 to 150 million per cells per microliters. Its appearance is thick, yellowish, white, opalescent, secretion having a characteristic order known as seminal order. Presumptive test. The first is alternative light sources that is ALS. Under specialized lights, semen will fluorence due to the presence of molecules such as flavin and choline conjugated proteins. This color will vary from blue to yellow depending on the light equipment use. This deduction technique is highly presumptive because many molecules that is natural and artificial will fluorence in similar way as semen. Second is seminal acid phosphatase test, SAP, also known as the Walker test or betamine spot test in the presence of alpha naphthalyl acid phosphate and betamine phosphate, AP will produce a dark purple color in less than a minute. Postate specific antigens test detects postate specific antigens that is PSA. PSA is produced in high amount by male prostate gland. This antigen can also be found in very small amounts of fecal material and sweat. Studies also indicate that PSA can exist in females, urine and breast milk. Caution is urged when interpreting positive PSA results which are not confirmed by actual presence of smell. The fourth, choline test, a stain extract is taken on a microscope slide and add a drop of fluorescent iodine. Place the cover, slip and leave for 10 minutes. Brown colored crystals of choline per iodide will be formed, showing presence of semen in the stain. Then comes lastly, spermine test. To prepare the extract, soak the stained cloth in 2.5% solution of trichloroacetic acid in a test tube and centrifuge for one hour. Take the supernatant and equal volume of echo solution of picric acid on a microscopic slide. Yellow colored obtuse or rhombotic prism shaped crystals of spermine pictrate will be formed showing positive for presence of human serum. Confirmatory test. The first is Christmas tree stain. 
positive visual identification of sperm cells using a stain. Two main reasons are used consequently to produce this distinctive stain that is picro indico calamine stains the neck and tail portion of the sperm in green and blue while the nuclear fast red gives the sperm heads red color and tip of the heads a pink color precautions sperm cells deteriorate quickly after ejaculation sperm survival will depend on surrounding environment and types of surface the sperm tails are the most susceptible to damage and will break down first. Therefore, the analyst must be trained to make visual distinction between sperm heads and other types of cells in the mix. RSID stands for Rapid Stain Identification Test for Semen. It identifies the presence of the seminal vesicle specific antigens or segmentogenyl this antigen is unique to human semen. Therefore, there is no cross reactivity with other body fluids in males and females or with semen from other mammals. This test can also identify semen if the stain was stored in less than favorable conditions. Saliva. The deduction of saliva can be a useful tool in many types of criminal cases, although saliva testing is not requested as often as testing for semen or blood. While the presumptive tests are available that can be used to indicate saliva, they have many limitations. Of the forensic laboratories that perform presumptive testing for saliva, the deduction of MLAs and enzyme found at high levels in saliva is currently the most widely utilized method. Amylase is found in variety of body fluids but is more concentrated in saliva than in other body fluids. It should be noted that amylase is also found in plants and in some bacteria. In the body, amylase functions to break down starch into smaller molecules. A number of presumptive tests for amylase are available while some of the presumptive tests are very sensitive for the presence of amylase, none can actually confirm the presence of salivary amylase. Therefore, many laboratories forgo these tests in cases where the quantity of saliva procured is very less. Instead, depending on the circumstances surrounding a case, some laboratories opt to save these samples for DNA testing. Saliva is a colorless fluid secreted by three glands in the mouth. They are sublingual, submandibular, and parotid. Saliva from parotid glands contains amylase enzymes, which aid in the digestion of carbohydrates. Saliva is composed of 90% water, and 1% includes electrolytes, enzymes, mucus. Human produce 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva in a day. Presumptive test. Fadebas test, a chemical region called Fadebas, is used to detect the enzymatic activity of the alpha amylase enzyme, which is found in saliva. This enzyme is found in other organisms as well. Alpha amylases from bacteria, fungi, or chimps are very similar in structure and function to that of human alpha amylase. Also in humans, there are four variants of alpha amylase, two of which are found in saliva. The other two are secreted by the pancreas. This test is presumptive because it will give a positive result if the alpha amylase enzymes from any organism is present. First, place a small piece of a sample material in 10 by 75 test tube. In a second test tube, place an equal size piece of known saliva stain as a positive control. In a third tube, add no sample that is called negative control. Then add 1.0 microliter distilled water and one fourth Fedabas tablet to each tube using clean forceps. Third, vortex to mix thoroughly. Next, transparent dark blue supernatant of equal or greater intensity than the positive control is regarded as a positive test 
for amylase activity. Finally, a blue color that is less intense than the positive control but darker than the negative control is considered inconclusive for presence of amylase. No blue color is considered negative for or presence of amylase. Second is amylase test. Iodine solution is added to suspected stain that is saliva and is incubated at 37 degree followed by addition of star solution. This causes starch to turn a deep blue color. But amylase is starch hydrolyzing enzyme. The presence of amylase causes the disappearance of the blue color that is due to hydrolysis of the starch and can be used an indicator for the presence of amylase. Conformity test. First is starch iodine radial diffusion test. Gel test plates that is 2% agarose 0.1% soluble starch, phosphate buffer, pH values 6.9 and 10 ml, agarose 0.2 gram, soluble starch 0.01 gram is prepared by boiling and continuous stirring constantly until all the agarose is dissolved. Divide gel solution and pour into 3.2 cm disposable plastic petri dishes. Allowed to polymerize completely, store gel inverted at 4 degree centigrade, extract small piece of stained material with 50 microliter distilled water. Punch holes in gel plate with a vacuum pipette leaving 1.5 cm below the sample wells. Place samples to be tested in the sample wells using a pipette. Each well holds nearly 4 microliter of liquid, cover the petri dish and place in an incubator at 37 degree for 6 hours or overnight. Stain the plate by pouring 1 into 50 dilution of saturated iodine solution onto the surface, rinse with distilled water. And finally, clear circles around the wells indicate areas of amylase activity. The diameter of the clear circle is proportional to the square root of the concentration of amylase. Record the diameter and result in notes. Second is Fedbas test and RSID test for human saliva. The RSID test for human saliva detects the alpha amylase molecule itself and specifically the alpha amylase from human saliva that is in comparison to the testing of enzymatic activity as seen in the FEDABAS test. Performing both of these tests is considered a conformity test. Identification of urine. Urine is helpful in cases of harassment, mischief, sexual assault, stains identified through visual examination, alternate light may help, in case you want to identify the urine on the piece of cloth, rarely used, is it difficult to identify as urine and difficult to get DNA profile. Identifying urine, look for urea or catenin. These are in other body fluids in lower concentration and is difficult to detect. Liquid nature of urine allows chemicals to spread out and becomes diluted over large area. Catenin test. Region preparation to 10 ml sodium hydroxide, that is a 10%, add about 50 ml, that is macroliter, saturated solution of picric acid. Take extract on a slide and add few drops of region mixture. The intense red coloration is an indication of presence of urine. The second test is urea native test. Take the extract in test tube and add two drops of acetone to it. Now with a glass rod, add a small drop of nitric acid into it. Positive results for renewing shows formation of urea natural crystals at the junction and you can see under the microscope. This picture shows the union check salmon, that is a strip. In case you want to the doctor or the forensic scientist want to check the reading, the presence of urine, then they use this kit which has been shown here 
that is abnormal normal and abnormal very high that we see catenin nitrate and glutaral at the head and different ph specific gravity and bleach and pyridinium chloromy make traces of fecal matter faces the end product or after digestion undigested food mucosal cells bacteria it can be identified by greenish brown color order undigested food found in cases of sodomy or unnatural offenses and sometimes in that by hanging can test for urobelgian but stain must be apparent microscopic examination suspected stains are softened with distilled water for about half an hour a small amount of scraping from the stain is transferred onto a microscope glass slide and a drop of lugol's adun is added to it the material is then covered with a cover slip and examined under microscope for the detection of undigested food particles vegetable residues and muscle fibers other test that is euro balingion test is formed in the intestine by reduction of bilirubin euro bilirubin is oxidized to eurobilin which is soluble in alcohol this test relies on the formation of a green fluorescent zinc eurobilin complex formed in the presence of neutral alcohol zinc salt the other is standard or control a non fecal stain stained and unstained control should be tested each time the testing is performed use distilled water as a negative control dna testing for the faces low cell count and high bacteria content make testing difficult but not impossible as shown in the slide vomit in the vomit gunsberg's test is very famous test to understand the composition of the vomit found in cases of food poisoning or deliberately digesting poisons possibly look at low ph or undigested food for the examination of vomit presence of the materials is to be taken into account that is presence of mucus free acl endothelial cells from gastric mucosa and undigested and semi digested food material now for the test of mucus to the extract at 33% acetic acid drop by drop apolescence appears which may be due to mucus or lipid substance or both if an addition of more acetic acid apolescent does not disappear or presence of mucus is confirmed because with excess of acetic acid lipid globulins dissolve but not the mucus gunberg's test test for free acl the reagent is prepared by six drops of 10% fluoroxynol in alcohol with three drops that is 10% vanillin in alcohol in a proclin evaporating dish one drop of suspected extract is placed and one two drops of gunsberg's reagent is mixed at once the contents are allowed to dry completely a brilliant red color indicates free acl then to understand endothelial cells after centrifuging the extract for 10 minutes a thin film is made on a slide the endothelial cells are observed under microscope milk or tears this is not very significantly important body fluids forensically it is found present in lactating mothers generally in cases of poisoning to kill infants or to prove the alleged pregnancy and illegal abortion of the infants are cases where it is examined in almost all the cases of drug abuse drug passes to some extent in breast milk but the clinical significance of this depends upon the first the degree of drugs passage into milk the second the amount of milk ingested by the infant at feeding the third whether the infant absorbs the drugs fourth and finally whether the drug affects the infant it is very difficult to determine that what drugs are contraindicated in lactating mothers 
because of the very limited human studies on the subject in assessing the impact of maternal medication on breastfeeding the clinician must always weigh the many benefits of breastfeeding over start medication to nursing mothers also it is important to see if the medicines have any side effects on the lactating mothers that may result in health hazards for the newborn same is the case with tears it is also not important forensically usually because by the time the expert reaches the scene of crime or by the time the exhibit reaches the laboratory tear etc gas dried up leaving nothing behind for the expert to examine moreover it doesn't constitute to prove that it is the result of criminal activity dna analysis there are various modern methods of collection and preservation of biological evidence for human identification by dna analysis investigators and scientists need to work together to determine the most probability pieces of evidence and to establish priorities given the sensitive nature of dna evidence officers should always contact their laboratory personnel or evidence collection technicians when collection questions arise the high sensitivity of dna determination has even changed the way police investigators define biological evidence today the sensitivity of pcr is so high that even as minute as 1 nanogram of dna is sufficient to yield information to individualize evidence with this technology in hand the horizon of the criminal investigator extends beyond the traditional dried blood stain or semen stain note that in practice crime scene samples may contain considerably less usable dna depending on environmental conditions dna has been isolated from other sources such as gastric fluids and facial stains however it can be difficult to generate a dna profile from these sources in case samples due to significant degradation several factors affect the ability to maintain a dna profile the sensitivity of pcr dna tapping methods is not worthy but still limited the second concern is sample degradation prolonged exposure or even a large blood stain to the environment or to bacterial contamination can degrade dna and render it unsuitable for further analysis the third consideration is sample purity and dna content of different types of samples what are the some of the dna technologies used in forensic investigations first is restriction fragment length polymorphism that is rflp rf is a technique for analyzing the variable lengths of dna fragments that result from digesting a dna sample with a special kind of enzyme this enzyme is restriction endonucleus cuts dna at a specific sequence pattern known as restriction endonucleus recognition site the second is pcr analysis the third is scr analysis fourth is mitochondrial dna analysis and the last is y chromosome analysis now the y chromosome analysis is passed directly from father to son so analysis of genetic markers on the y chromosome is especially useful for tracing relationship among males or for analyzing biological evidence involving multiple male contributors preparatory steps taken before dna analysis there are numerous types of analysis the steps has to be taken the first one is type of sample amount for dna second is evidence collection all biological evidence is subject to deterioration the careful collection and storage of this evidence will help ensure that this evidence is preserved 
so that useful information can be obtained from its analysis. Then comes liquid blood specimen at crime scene. Liquid blood should be collected with a clean, preferably style syringe or disposable paper and transferred to a clean, preferably style test tube. A blood clot can be transferred to a clean test tube with a clean spatula. A clean cotton cloth can be used to soak up liquid blood or a blood clot that is avoiding areas containing only serum. Then we have wet blood stains, dried blood stains, semen and seminal stains, collection of urine, saliva and other body fluids follow the same rules as blood and blood stains. And the finally issue concerning contamination. The important point is that whatever, whenever you collect any sample, you have to be very careful in collecting all the samples from the scene of crime. As I told you earlier that you are dealing with a dried blood stain or blood dried semen or saliva, but we are not using the fresh. So one has to be very careful in determining or taking the sample from the crime scene. Now I will tell you some important uh, interesting facts about DNA. We always talk about DNA, but it is very expensive business. Theoretically, economically, we know. Now every student must have got the, what you call the identity card or the Aadhaar card. Now you take the example of Aadhaar card. We have given in making the Aadhaar card fingerprint, or iris for identification. Nobody gave any DNA for identification because it is very expensive business. So in India, we follow DNA in most of the VIP cases, which are very important from different angles. But in general parlance, we take, we depend on fingerprints, we depend on serology, we depend on saliva, we depend on urine, we depend on semen or any other biological fluid, but we go to the DNA at very large stage and somehow if it is a very, very VIP case. Now we summarize this module that we have learned about most important that is the body fluids encountered in most of the violent crime scene. We have learned to distinguish and identify semen, saliva, urine, feces, vomit, etc. using presumptive and confirmatory test. Further, we studied how one can extract DNA from them for personal identification. Students read about different techniques that can be used for DNA extraction such as RFLP, STR, PCR, mtDNA means multi-contra DNA and YSTR and other usability in different crime scenes. For example, mitochondrial DNA establishes the maternal lineage while YSTR is passed on from father to son. Thank you.